So what's so fun about hanging around people like these who just have that wide-eyed approach hanging around NHL players? Yeah, it's just, it brings brings out some of the excitement, right, of, uh, of the game itself. Um, you know, brings you a little bit back to your roots and a little bit about what it's all about. Um, you know, and it, so it's it's going to be fun. Not only have you know these three in and around as our captains, but uh, you know you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of young young people tomorrow involved in the game and in and around in the game, and uh, it makes it exactly that. It makes it fun. Can you think about when you're for, when you're that young again and the joy that you had watching the game, your heroes, and what they did to influence you. Yeah, I wish I could remember that long ago, but uh, I, you know, my yeah, from you know, from when I was a kid, I mean, it was about you know being excited, not just to be. I mean, whenever we could be on the ice and around the rink and at the rink, we were. Uh, that's where you spend all your time with your with your buddies, with your friends. Um, but also just you know the opportunity to, to watch NHL games. I mean, we didn't have as access to as many games on TV as we did then, so it was more of a weekly event that uh, you know kind of became almost a you know it was a family gathering. So, um, ton of good memories. But just mostly just being in and around the rank, being with your teammates, um, and and the fun that comes with that. I think if I can transition that very briefly, you know. What gives you the sense from that kind of joy and out of the joy that you experience as a coach with these guys, with this group, and where they are right now at this point of the season? Well, it's, you know, it's a little more, obviously there's more on the line. It's a little more serious, but at the end of the day, it's really what it's about. You're, you know, you're competing to win with, you know, with your, with your teammates, and these guys become family, um, you know, and, you uh, you know, as you grow up uh, together throughout a year, you know, you get to this point of the year, you want to be in the middle of this of this race, uh, and uh, you know, to be to be confident within that race, to be comfortable within the ups and downs of it, um, you know, are are pretty special things. And you know, we feel that you know that's that's you know that's where our group is at, and we feel that's really important. You got to be you got to be comfortable with the battle that's ahead. Uh, with a little bit more time to think about it and look back at uh, what uh, some of the takeaways from that playoff style for this game. I loved our compete, loved our, um, you know, our response and every, you know, we, our, our response was great. Um, our initiation was great. Um, the disappointment, you know, was, you know, it comes also at a pretty great level when you're in a position. You know, not only get a, you know to get a point, but to get two points with four minutes to go in the game. So there's takeaways there, um, you know, in order to close that game out. Some little things that uh, we can do a little bit better, and just make sure that we're communicating on those on those areas, um, shoring up those areas, um, and you know, and, and closing out valuable points. And you know, again, I talked about it before the game. There's not very many nights where you're going to score your way to winning at this time of year. So. Um, you know, guys. You know, guys. Uh, you know, thinking and playing the right way all the time. Um, nobody worrying about you know individual statistical gains. Everybody worrying about the team outcome, um, and you know, and the powerful. You know, the the power that that brings to the group um, at this time of year is really important. With that, there's you know, a saying kind of as it refers to the playoffs. You know, there's the players that get you there and the players that get you through. You know. When thinking about lineups this time of year, is there kind of that shift now, you know, towards the players to get you through? I don't know that there's a big shift. I mean, we, you know, our, this group has, you see, there's been additions throughout the year, but for the most part, this group has been together, right? This, this is the group that started. This is the group that's gonna, you know, that's gonna finish this race. Um, so the mindset is something that we've talked about all year. The importance of the mindset becomes becomes greater at this time of year because the results are harder to come by. Um, so, you know, if there's any shift at all, it's, you know, it's just in, you know, the communication of that uh, amongst the group. That's not just from the coaching staff to the group. That's, you know, that's, uh, you know, from, from us to them, but also in and amongst the group uh, themselves. Just, you know, the, uh, the selfless mentality that has to take place at this time of year to be able to, uh, to have success. Dave, getting uh, Toronto back uh, tomorrow here and then Mark Giordano back in the house for the first time since last year's trade, what kind of impact did he make on this program? Yeah, you know, his time here, you know, in a sense was short, but his impact was great. Um, you know, you can ask any of the players that were in the dressing room with them uh, last year what he meant to our group in terms of 
uh, setting a foundation, setting a standard of compete uh, and, and, and professionalism, um, you know, and, and, you know, for that he's always going to have his stamp on our group and on the organization. Dave, you're facing another team that's very good down the middle tomorrow. I know generally speaking you said you like the team to focus on the team instead of the opponents, but what if any kind of message do you give to your centermen when you're going against such a good team down the middle? Well, they've got different options, right? I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, we saw it the other night against Boston. You know, we saw, you know, in, on our defensive zone draws, you know, uh, on clean losses, you know, you you put yourself in a position, you know, to have to face set plays, to, you know, to, to, to face different things that way. But, you know, the big thing is just, you know, individually compete in that dot. And then collectively, you got to be on your toes and ready and anticipate the drop of the puck and be and be ready to play the puck. You know, when once that once that initial drop happens, you got to you know you have to know your your uh, your roles, your you know your basic responsibilities, and then you got to you know you got to play the game within that. So, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, there was you know there's a lot of. Uh, um, and rightly so, um, you know, a lot of focus on the other team centerman the other night against uh, Boston, uh, but we scored a face-off goal, and we probably at the end of the day had more direct opportunities off of our offensive zone face-offs than they did, even though numerically, um, you know, they they certainly had the uh, uh, you know the better numbers and and had some you know potential good looks. So we're going to have to be really sharp there. We're going to have to be really competitive there tomorrow. On that topic, uh, Matty Veneer is over 50% uh, in the face-off dot last game against the Boston team. He's got some pretty good centers. Like, I know that's an area on face-offs he kind of struggled earlier in the season. Are you seeing some progression there? And, you know, some yeah, I've seen progression in all parts of his game, and that's, you know, that's uh, that's going to be an area that he's got to continue growing in. Um, night in and night out, especially as you get to this time of year, that face-off dots gets more and more important. Um, it gets more and more competitive. Um, you know, and that's an area, you know, you, you see the pride come out in guys. You see the competitiveness come out and, uh, you know, Maddie's growing in that area. And, you know, there's, you know, throughout the league, it's, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's a little bit of an advantage, you know, given to, to the veteran player, to the star player, um, you know, so, you know, Maddie's just got to keep, you know, working and grinding in that area and gaining, you know, gaining his, uh, um, his experience. And, and you know, just continuing to grow in that uh, in that piece of his game. Dave, checking back in on any update for uh, Andre Burakovsky, and if you think uh, soon or next week makes sense right now. The first yeah, week. I have no update. He's you know week to week, and nothing further from that point. We've talked a lot about puck possession and how the puck manager, especially for this group, is such a key point to their strength when they're playing well. Is there a sort of I guess a greater, finer point you? underline it with at this time of year as we're starting to get to these final games and into towards the postseason or is it just the same message every day? Well it's similar it's like I mean every part of the game becomes you know a little bit uh, there's a little bit more of a focus on on each part of the game right and that's why you know the um, you know the the competitiveness continues to rise uh, the intensity of these games continue to rise um, so every part of your game has to come with that, you know, and that starts with, it, it doesn't complicate it, you know, it really it's, you know, it's, it's more of a simplicity um, to how you want to go about doing things as a group and, and going out and executing that. So, um, you know, there's no need to overcomplicate things. It's, it's a matter of, you know, the importance of executing from, uh, you know, from the small details, you know, through the competitiveness of your game.